almost all religion believe that death is the right gateway to heaven. But that does not still change the fact that most people view death as something to be avoided. We usually at all costs, do everything we can to prevent death as long as possible, either by medical science, or some other means. What if we are proposed to journey right away, to eternal life in heaven, by means of some heavenly express? Wouldn't we find out that, almost, no one would want to buy a ticket, or even accepting the free ticket? It's possible that most people would prefer to continue their present life here on earth, despite what a wonderful place heaven is supposed, or assumed to be, but still, it seems no one is in a hurry to go there. Because, the possibility of getting an immediate residence permit in heaven, doesn't seem, to be that appealing. Our rational actions and logics as human indicate that this is the way most of us think. Most religions, or religious organizations, including most Christian denominations, teach that good people go to some sort of paradise, usually heaven, after they die. Heaven is typically characterized as a place of unsurpassable happiness. Just call it the ultimate paradise. It is commonly taught, and believed that, all who go there will live joyfully forever. Sometimes that we Christians are preaching about eternity, or living forever in heaven. I have seen some logically minded individuals with this kind of response. Eternity, doing what in heaven? Perhaps, the reason of so many people's reluctance, on embarking the hereafter through death, is because, the Bible, nor any of its apostles did not however, provided us with a truly compelling explanations, as to what the righteous would do, or at least, to expect after arriving in heaven. If we are to spend all eternity there in heaven, you would think God would have Elias tell us in the Bible, what we should expect once we arrive. Let's ask ourselves this, will we spend our time plucking harps? Will we sit and just simply gaze upon God forever, and ever? These are both popular conceptions of heaven, but most people can't imagine doing what either for eternity. Eternity is after all, a very expanding long time, remember? Maybe this is the right time we should ask ourselves a straightforward question. Do these common concepts of eternity even come from the Bible? Many of us who expect to go to heaven, can clearly admit that, they can find little in the scriptures, about what they have to look forward to once they get there. The quest for God was a mind-opening article of its kind published by one respected British historian and author Paul Johnson in 1996. It was stated this way, heaven lacks genuine incentive. Indeed, it lacks definition of any kind. It is the greatest hole in theology. The same article proceeded to ask, if heaven is indeed the goal God has set for his servants, why has he revealed so little about it in his words? There is a simple reason we encounter a vacuum when we look in the Bible. For what the saved I mean those who are spared of some sort of eternal punishment, will do in heaven. The Bible does not say the righteous will dwell in heaven as their reward. As we will see, the Bible reveals that God has something else in mind something far different and far superior to most people's concepts about heaven. We really need to rethink and change our earthly conception of the true nature of God. When I say God, I mean Jehovah Yahweh, the Lord of Lords, King of Kings and the one and only God of hosts. Jehovah, God, has a plan for us, and his plans are not of evil, but for good and for greater, and greatest greatness of all mankind. Wait a minute please, confusion about heaven, isn't the only problem we run into, when we consider popular views of life after death. What about the unrighteous, those who don't measure up? What happens to them? Many who profess Christianity believe that, the wicked will burn forever in hell, they sincerely believe, 
This is what the Bible teaches. But we need to ask a simple question. Would a merciful and loving God inflict excruciating torment on human beings for trillions upon trillions of years throughout all eternity without end? Could the great creator God of the universe be so unfeeling and uncaring? The Bible in the book of Acts chapter 17, verse 31, indeed said that God has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness. At that time, those who have repented and accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior will be given eternal life. The New International Version of the Bible also stated on the 12th verse of Acts chapter 4. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. But, what will happen in that day to the hapless people, who have never even heard, or been exposed to the name of Jesus Christ? Will they be cast, shrieking into hellfire along with those who knowingly hate and despise God? Only a minority of the Earth's population claim for accept being Christians. Those who profess Christianity total only about a third of the world's population. Vast numbers of the others, almost two-thirds of the world's population never had the opportunity to genuinely repent and accept Christ, simply because of where they are living. Millions more, through the previously past centuries likewise, never had the opportunity just because of when they lived. Would it be just and right for God to subject them to the same punishment that he will give to those who willfully reject him and choose to make themselves his enemies. These questions are neither trivial nor hypothetical. They affect the overwhelming majority of all people who have ever lived. When carried to their conclusions, the traditional answers have sobering implications about the character, nature, and also the judgmental mentality of the type or kind of God Christians claim to worship. Let's face this question squarely and honestly, isn't it time for us to re-examine the truth of what the Bible really intended to teach us about earth, nature, heaven, or hell? Join Earth actually on this journey through the pages of history and your Bible as we explore these questions. You may find the answers quite surprising. Why don't you quickly subscribe to be updated immediately we publish a video. Forgive me if you already did. Just go ahead smashing the like button. Do it for me heartlessly. Thank you for being a part of this great generation. One love keeps us together as one.